Hello and welcome to One on One. I am Cyril Stober. My guest on this program personifies the true Nigerian dream, what you might call a celebration of the Nigerian spirit of creativity and hard work. Now, let's go back to 1966, when a boy was born, the fifth of seven children. Although of Sokoto origin, he was born in Kaduna. He grew up in Sokoto, attending capital school from 1971 to 1978, and later Federal Government College Sokoto from 1978 to 1983. He finished with an award as the best in technical drawing. The next stop was Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, where he was admitted to study architecture. But for this young student, the university could not support his dream. And so he left for a polytechnic instead, the Berninkebi Polytechnic, where he studied from 1986 to 1988, and graduated with an award as best all-round student. He worked for a while in the Ministry of Works, Sokoto, and moved to Detroit, Michigan on a state scholarship to the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. In 1994, he received his degree in automobile design, after which he began work with General Motors, one of the biggest automobile companies in the world. He is General Motors' lead exterior designer and is the designer of the Chevy Volt, a car described as an American Revolution and the hottest concept in the design line. Let's welcome Jelani Aliu. Jelani Aliu, thanks for being on One on One. My pleasure. Somehow, I begin to wonder where to start this story. It's uh, something more or less like a, a fairy tale that uh, this young student of Sokoto origin goes on to become one of the most acclaimed designers in such a massive uh, automobile company in the world. But again, uh, here we are celebrating what we call the Nigerian Dream. So once again, welcome to this uh, program on NG One on One. Thank you very much. I'm curious because we've written a little bit about your background and um, you've had admission yes. to Ahmadu Bello University Zaria to study architecture yes. and then you left and went to a polytechnic. Tell me, why does a student abandon a university mm -hmm. with all the craze for university yes. and go to a polytechnic instead? It's, it's not a usual thing. What happened? Yes. Well, I have uh, I've always loved drawing because uh, I've, I've seen and I've always believed drawing is not just uh, just putting you know lines on paper hmm. it's actually a language of communicating uh, ideas and concepts hmm. it's also an avenue to develop those ideas hmm. uh, and also to uh, make them uh, uh, legible uh, to uh, uh, fabricators uh, I've always wanted, I've always loved doing things with my hand, uh, reality of making things happen. Uh, and at ABU, it's a great university. It was a great university, and it's still a great university. Uh, but I was looking for uh, studies, I was looking for courses where I would just jump into doing things uh, 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 physically. Uh, I really love design, coming up with new concepts. And uh, through, uh, at ABU, we would have had to go in through a lot of theory. I did not want to do that. I wanted to straight away go into conceptualizing and designing homes and, and, and other buildings that people could use immediately. Uh, and the Polytechnic uh, offered that. You jumped into uh, a diploma and you were hands on. You were drawing from the first week. Hmm. Let me still dwell on that a little bit more. And um, because I'm looking at you, uh, deciding that, look, this is not what I want to do, this is what I want to do. Yes. But uh, we live in a society where the first choice easily would be a university education. And so mm -hmm. when you decided, no, you'd rather go to a polytechnic where you could do things with your hands. How, how did that go mm -hmm. with your folks? Did, did it go down well with your parents, for instance? Well, they have always known that I had always wanted to be a designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they did support me. They gave me support uh, uh, to achieve my dream. Uh, and uh, the fundamental thing was um, we talk about universities and polytechnics but mm. to me the important thing is I had a vision of what I wanted to do and so I looked around to understand what avenue what path 
I needed to follow to get to where I wanted to go. Uh, if, if the university had offered such an option, I would have taken it, but it did not. So I saw that avenue through the Polytechnic, and that's mm -hmm. why I took that. Sometimes when we're in school, we tend to think that maybe at that stage in life, you know, you've not really um, had a clear vision of what, what, what you wanted to do. But at that stage, you had a vision of what you yes. wanted to do. Did yes. you have the benefit of a counselor, for instance, to say, okay, Jalada, you, you're so good with your hands, you're mm -hmm. good with drawing, maybe you ought to think about doing this, and, you know. Because I, I, I'm thinking it's possible that you'd have uh, some yeah. student who would uh, not really be clear about what they wanted to do, but mm -hmm. maybe someone, a friend, a parent, a teacher, mm -hmm. a counselor, would now mm -hmm. decide how to goad them into something. Yes, well, about, about four things happened. The first was my passion for drawing itself, a drawing you know, from things around me and from imagination and putting that on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, the second was uh, my love for, for, for vehicles and cars, mm -hmm. you know, getting magazines, seeing the Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Right. And the third, which is actually should be the first, is uh, the, the encouragement uh, that we got at home from our family uh, in terms of really opening up our world, in terms of helping us understand all that was out there, all the potential. So we lived in Sokoto, but we, we were supported and helped to see the world beyond Sokoto, beyond Nigeria. So we were aware through magazines and books and select TV programs of all the opportunity out there, different careers. Uh, so my immediate family really supported me with that and helped me with uh, materials. And then we had a very close family friend, uh, Sanusa Hamid, who also was a mentor in terms of helping me develop my art. So all these things came together uh, and enabled me to really understand what I really wanted to do and uh, go uh, uh, for, uh, for my passion. Right, and so you did. I went to the mm -hmm. Polytechnic and uh, came out with um, an world's best all-round student. Yes. And so the journey began and uh, you had this brief stint at the Ministry of Works. Mm -hmm. Yes, that yes. was it. <laughs> Yes, you had to go and do it. Tell yes. us what it was like, and uh, you moved on to the College for Creative Studies in, uh, in the United States. Yes, um, I uh, after bringing Kebi, like you mentioned, I worked with the Ministry of Works and uh, did some in architectural uh, uh, work. Uh, but all the while, my big dream really was to become a car designer. So I identified, uh, uh, first I needed to understand how I would, I would get there. And it required that I uh, go overseas to, 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 to study that. Uh, I looked at Italy uh, because of my love for Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Uh, but I didn't go to Italy because I would have had to learn Italian. It's a beautiful language, but I didn't want to have to go through learning a language before I could express myself. So I chose the United States. Okay, so there you wouldn't need to go through all the trouble of learning another language in order to um, express yourself. Yeah. Well, you did go into that, and uh, shortly mm -hmm. afterwards, um, mm -hmm. how, how did the General Motors thing come about? Well, the, the College for Creative Studies, uh, at, end, at the end of uh, uh, the four-year course, uh, the final students would do their thesis in uh, different uh, projects, and then we would put up our work on the wall. Uh, and then the companies would come through, uh, all the major c companies in, in the United States and Europe. And that's when GM came through, saw my work, and uh, offered me uh, an interview. And an interesting thing happened really was uh, I almost came back home. Mm -hmm. uh, after graduation, uh, coming from Nigeria, uh, you would need a working visa to work in the United States. Uh, mine hadn't come through yet, so I just, uh, you know, after graduation, a lot of pe people were packing up to go home, and I was doing the same thing too. And I came downstairs, and I put a phone call through to the Nigerian embassy uh, to tell them I finished my courses, if they could get me a ticket to come back to, to Nigeria. Uh, and for some reason, I couldn't get through. Uh, I saw a friend of mine through the window, he's washing his car, so I went over to him just to say hello before I maybe went back and called them again. Uh, and then he said, where have you been? Uh, GM is trying to get a hold of you. Or they want an inter another interview with you. Uh, so that's how it, uh, it all started. Okay. <laughs> oh, well. Providence West. Yes. And uh, you went to and got this job with GM. Yes. And um, you'd known as the one who designed what's called the Chevy Volt. And yes. uh, they call that a revolutionary car. Yes. What, what's this about the Chevy Volt? Well, it's... Uh, 
it's, it's a plug-in vehicle. Uh, it's a vehicle that uh, uses both electricity and, and petrol. Um, so you have at least about you know, 75 kilometers in pure electric charge. And then when you run out of electric charge, there's an onboard uh, generator that comes on and charges the vehicle. Uh, what's important about this vehicle is really all about what's happening globally in terms of a lot of uh, newer understanding and development towards renewability and sustainability. Mm -hmm. So this vehicle is really one of the answers to uh, a lot of the challenges that uh, uh, we're facing you know, as a human race, and it's also a solution to that. Um, you know, we, we, we live on a truly magical planet, a, a gigantic orb of life hurtling through space. Everywhere we look around us, we're surrounded by wonders of our natural world. Uh, from the tiny leaf, only fractions of a millimeter thick and yet a highly efficient factory, to the amazing sea rays that glide within the deep waters of the Atlantic, planet Earth is a perfect balance of beauty and practicality. And uh, so as I do my designs, as I look at new solutions, I really take inspirations from nature and from being a Nigerian and African, being close to, to, to nature, and apply that to, to design. And, and, and that's why I want to go back, because you, you see, coming from where, you, where, mm. from where you come from, you're yes. Nigerian, you're from Sokoto, so you grew up in Sokoto. Yes. And, uh, you know, ordinarily, people mm. would think that um, uh, you probably mm. were trained in some other parts of the world, and, mm -hmm. but you went to school here in Nigeria. Yes. You honed your initial skills here. Yes. And that, for me, is what people would like to find out. And, and you just mentioned about, um, you know, being close to nature and yes. using that as an advantage to design. So yes. when you tend to look at people and they say, uh, nothing can come out of mm. an environment and they see mm. challenges, not opportunities, what do you say to that? Yes. Well, like I had mentioned earlier today at an event, uh, uh, at the uh, E-Nigeria e event today. Uh, this is a magnificent country. Uh, you know, we have resources, we have crude oil, uh, we have natural gas and a wide variety of raw materials, and we have fertile soil that could be cultivated to feed hundreds of millions. But the biggest asset that we have is our humanity. You know, that magical inner spirit that glows from within. And each and every individual is born with a talent. And we, we just tend to dismiss all the great potential around us, like nature. We need to pull from it. We, that is who we are. So we need to see it as an advantage, not uh, as an asset of being, you know, living in a remote area uh, or living in a small village. You tend to think you have to move to the city. Mm. You don't have to. There's a lot there from which you can pull from and uh, really achieve your dreams, so, or at least get the necessary foundation that will take you very far. There are so many Nigerians that uh, you can look at and say we have mm -hmm. some of the very finest brains uh, mm -hmm. around. Yes. But we tend to talk all the time mm -hmm. about not having the opportunities to mm -hmm. apply uh, knowledge mm -hmm. to everyday uh, mm -hmm. uh, situations. Yes. How can we mm -hmm. turn this thinking yes. around? I think the magic word is creativity, uh, acknowledging the importance of creativity and applying it to our daily lives. Uh, creati creativity is, just, is, is not just uh, limited to you know, drawing <clears throat> or acting or the arts. Uh, you could be a creative doctor, a creative banker. Uh, it's all in how you approach uh, challenges and come up with new solutions to them. And uh, we're doing some of that. We need to be encouraged to do more of that, uh, both uh, by the public and private sector. Nigerians need to understand that they can come up with solutions to the problems that we face every day. Someone can easily say to you, Jelani Ali, here you are in one of the biggest, if not the biggest, automobile industries in the world, and would say, we would like to see our own Nigerian dream in a situation, a similar situation like that. And uh, mm -hmm. what is missing for us? Is it the atmosphere, the mm -hmm. opportunities, mm -hmm. or is it something to do with uh, policy? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, a lot of things are beginning to fall uh, uh, in line, uh, there's, a l there's been a lot of momentum recently, both by the uh, uh, by the government in terms of uh, promoting a local uh, automobile uh, sector. Uh, that's a, an excellent start. So we need to now really understand those people who are very talented within Nigeria and outside Nigeria who can come together to really create that, uh, as, as I call it, the, the indigenous vehicle. And an indigenous vehicle doesn't mean, you know, vehicle that's 100% Nigeria, but the important thing is a vehicle designed and developed 
uh, and to be manufactured in the country to serve the Nigerian uh, purpose. So the Nigerian car, in other words, what we're looking at here mm -hmm. is uh, a Nigerian design, mm -hmm. design developed yes. and manufactured. Yes. And uh, not necessarily mm -hmm. having a hundred percent of all the components of everything come from Nigeria. Because sometimes when people talk about uh, mm -hmm. the Nigerian car, you yes. you ask, you say, from what we see these days with mm -hmm. the high tech all over the place, yes. no one car uh -huh. comes entirely from one country and things are made in different parts and companies are spread out. That is very true. So the Nigerian car doesn't mean a vehicle that is 100% Nigerian content. It means a vehicle designed for Nigerians that will perform for Nigerians, taking into account our histories, cultures, and the way we use our, 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 our products and uh, also our economic structure. So that makes a Nigerian vehicle. No one company anymore uh, uses all the materials and components from one locality. They're all sourced. Any major manufacturer, like you said, has components from all over the world. We will do the same thing too if we were to do a Nigerian car, but we have to make one that is adaptable to our environment. Okay, you did mention uh, and acknowledge um, some of the steps being taken to develop a Nigerian automotive industry, and one of them is, really, mm -hmm. is to make it possible mm -hmm. for these big manufacturers to come here and site their plants in this country and make mm -hmm. use of the local resources as much as they can mm -hmm. and provide the technology, you know, transfer while you have yeah. uh, the people here, the indigenous people here work on those vehicles. Mm -hmm. You think that's a, that's a, uh, that's a right step in, in attaining this dream of the Nigerian vehicle that we think about? Well, assembling a car, yes, it provides a lot of jobs and it begins the technology transfer. But what we need is really to start from square one in terms of having Nigerian industrial and automotive designers, uh, not just a couple of them, but set up the at least a tertiary educational system to produce industrial designers, Nigerian industrial, industrial designers who understand what Nigerians need. And then they may work for an international company, they may work for a new Nigerian company to design uh, and develop a Nigerian vehicle. So we need to do that. Uh, it's one thing to assemble vehicles here and provide them on the road and provide jobs. It's a totally different thing to have Nigerians be there right from the start. We need to do that. Okay, so now we're looking at where we could get indigenous designers themselves mm -hmm. and people who can come up with concepts. Mm -hmm. Is it easy in this mm -hmm. context? And um, yes, you, we described you as uh, the Nigerian dream. Mm -hmm. But one would say, would Nigerians really mm -hmm. quickly accept mm -hmm. a homegrown indigenous design? Mm -hmm. uh, many people say we tend to have this taste for things mm -hmm. foreign, mm -hmm. and we might easily think, well, mm -hmm. perhaps indigenous would not be up to standard. What do you say mm -hmm. to that? Well, there are two things happening. You, we, you, we, you, we will always have you know, the, the high-end vehicles, the Rolls mm -hmm. Royces, the Ferraris that have already attained a certain status. And then we will all, always have vehicles like the uh, Volkswagen Beetle, the original Volkswagen Beetle that was designed to, to, to get uh, Germany on, on wheels. And so, so was the Model T. Um, there'll always be the love for that exotic, but things are different now. A lot of Nigerians, the youth, most, most especially, understand uh, uh, things being effective. They understand results. They understand that if you give them something that they need, actually it's a human, it's a human element, a uh, human need, that if you are in a certain situation with facing certain challenges, if someone comes along with a solution that makes your life easier, you will accept it and you'll grow to love that solution. And that's, if we provide that, people will, will, will love the Nigerian vehicle because it will make them their lives easier, their lives happier, it'll, it'll, it'll enable them economically. So you want to say, even though initially it might not look as exotic as, as the ones we see out there, it's proper for us to start here and uh, with time we can get those uh, big names and uh, the ones that we saw at mine elsewhere. Well, say so for example, we have a Ferraris that are <clears throat> beautiful, low, wide sports cars. Uh, but you could design, a Nigerian can design a vehicle that becomes emotionally irresistible and practically indispensable. Mm -hmm. So even with, a, with, a, with, a, with an affordable vehicle, with the right strategy and with the right design focus, we can design a vehicle that people love. If you look at the Apple phone, 
It's really very simple, but there's some magic to it in the way you use it, the user interface, how you interact with that product that, that makes you love that product and it delivers uh, results. We can do that with a Nigerian vehicle and have people fall in love with them and have people be unable to live without them. Let's go back to the educational system here. We are, uh, at this point in time in Nigeria, um, there's been this argument back and forth and uh, easily it's about the divide university education, mm -hmm. polytechnic education. And as we said at the start of this, right. it's not a usual thing to find someone leave a university yes. and go to a polytechnic. And the argument has been on. Even in terms of employment opportunities, yes. the university graduates are rated a little bit higher than the polytechnic graduates mm -hmm. and that has also provided challenges for the system. Mm -hmm. It's only been attempts have been made to harmonize that now. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the psyche of the average student is that Mm -hmm. If I go to a polytechnic, then I am disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. We'd like you to tell the story and say, is it really true that if you mm -hmm. attend the polytechnic, you're disadvantaged? At least you, <laughs> you, you don't seem like you lost anything that's going to be you. <laughs> no. The, uh, <clears throat> a good story is uh, I work for a major corporation uh, and I got hired after the four-year degree course at mm -hmm. College for Creative Studies. Mm -hmm. um, but that company has still not seen my diploma, you know, the, the result, the diploma, my degree. I still, they never asked for it. They were only interested in the designs that I could do, that I had done, and they continue to be only interested in the designs I can, I can, I can bring forward. So the psyche in Nigeria has to change. We need to long, we need to, what school did you go to? What type of school was it? But what can you do? What, has, what is your new level of understanding? How enlightened have you become? How much contribution can you now give to your society, to your state, to your country, to Africa and to the world? Uh, really, I think too much emphasis is being put on the names of schools or what they are. The important thing really should be what do those graduates, what are they able to do when they come out? It doesn't matter where a school is or what it is. If it produces the best graduates, that's the best school to go to. Okay, so we, we, since we're on that subject, um, mm -hmm. you talked about getting Nigerians to do designs. There are people out there who would want to. What kind of environment mm -hmm. can this thrive? Yes, well we need to set up schools for that. Um, we, we can't send everybody because th there are millions of talented Nigerians who can become industrial designers. And a little bit of background, industrial design is beyond automobiles. Everything that you touch and feel, the cameras here, you know, the lights, the table, houses, all fall under industrial design. And I always say that's what's, mi what's missing in Africa. We need to have our own industrial designers as opposed to some other people designing those products and then transplanting them here. So if we look at the wide field of industrial design with our millions of potential youth who could go into that uh, sector, uh, we can't send everybody overseas. We need to set up schools, departments in our universities and our polytechnics, and even start from primary school uh, to have these kids begin to understand the value of industrial design. Uh, that's what we need to do, to, to, to inculcate that uh, sector in our educational system across the board. Now, providing this environment, I've had uh, a lot of people have pointed to economic factors. Mm -hmm. Governments may not have the resources mm -hmm. that everyone expects them to. And in any case, it's been said that the private sector, to a large mm -hmm. extent, drives mm -hmm. uh, growth. Yes. One of the problems in Africa, mm -hmm. particularly in Nigeria, is people say the private sector is not keen mm -hmm. on uh, being the lead. Mm -hmm. in, in, in this effort at growth and everyone depends entirely on government, government mm -hmm. handouts mm -hmm. and uh, government to do everything. How can yes. we turn this around and become the mm -hmm. kind of growing economy? Yes, the economy is growing, mm -hmm. but we're not seeing the commensurate mm -hmm. um, improvement in the quality of life. Yes. In Nigeria, with a population of over 170 million, there's a lot of power and magic with the uh, private sector. Uh, every Nigerian individual wakes up in the morning, they need breakfast, they need toothpaste, they need food, they need to get to places. So the demand is there, uh, the market is there, Nigeria, West Africa, the, the, the rest of the continent. But just Nigeria itself, like I said, with 170 million, there's, there's, there's the vibrant economy that needs to be acknowledged, it's there. And then we need to encourage the private sector to really come up with solutions that people need. 
and really look inward and, and really provide those solutions. Uh, the government can only go so far. It can get things started, it can encourage, but and like I say, the responsibility lies within each and every one of us. We all need to have an entrepreneurial spirit to really come together uh, and, 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 and produce results to begin you know, to, to, to demystify and take away a lot of the challenges that we're facing. It's something that we could do. It's not impossible. All right. A while ago, the government decided that um, it had this huge resource that it could very well tap into. And that's talking about Nigerians in the diaspora mm -hmm. who have um, contributed a lot to other parts of the world. And the thinking is, if we have citizens who are out there yes. doing it for other countries, then we could tap into them and uh, benefit from their expertise here. How is that going with you? Are you personally or no the generally general? uh, we might come to the person <laughs> but generally yes, <laughs> yes. I, I believe there's a lot of that that's happening mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot of uh, contribution that Nigerians living overseas are making to Nigeria uh, it may not be uh, you know immediate uh, like I say with with this with the connected world uh, with the ability to really work work remotely, you don't really have to be in any one particular location to affect that uh, location. So some of that is really beginning to happen uh, between uh, people uh, setting up uh, operations in Nigeria. They may be living overseas, but they have uh, interest in Nigeria. Uh, and then between that and, and people actually being here physically and uh, engaging with the public and private sector. So some of that is happening. Uh, more needs to be done, but definitely uh, it has started. One of the things here we talk about is that not, not uh, enough research has been mm. done. We have institutions and uh, uh, it's said that they come up with things that end up on shelves and uh, no one is in that much of a hurry mm. to go the next step after you know putting something together researching in something and mm. getting it out there mm. what's what's the what's the issue here why can't we we hear that even mm. our educational institutions our universities they have so much that they have researched into and all mm. these are lying fallow mm. on shelves and in lockers mm. how can we take this out and come out yes know? We just need to really tap back into who we are <clears throat> in terms of being Africans. You know, we look at Africa, it's, it's a dynamic place. Every other person living in, in any other part of the world looks at Africa as with a lot of adventure. They want to come and see this magical place. Uh, we live here, so we just take it for granted. And there's a certain spirit in the African that we have lost. Uh, we are people who are dynamic, so we would need to bring that back. We need to incalculate that back into the minds and psyches of our, of our children. Give them that adventurous spirit that you can look beyond your village, you can look beyond your state, and you can, you can imagine, you can dream of a better world. And when you, when you begin to do that, when you begin to believe that you can make a difference to yourself and to your community, that's when you begin to look at solutions to go beyond the today and the tomorrow and into the future. And we can do that. Some people have suggested that um, mm. as a way of uh, moving fast, mm. lock down our borders. Well, metaphorically speaking, mm. and say, look, these goods mm. and the products that we mm. so enjoy that are coming from developed economies, mm -hmm. let's lock down and say, everything we need, mm -hmm. we produce here. Mm -hmm. Is that a viable option to quick um, uh, development along uh, uh, technological lines? Well, there's a momentum here in terms of the way the country is developing and the momentum in how the world is evolving. I don't believe that would be uh, a, good, a good idea. Uh, we need to continue to be part of the global civilization and then compete with the global civilization uh, for our own uh, betterment. Yes, but then how do you respond to the issues of um, unfair competition? Because uh, mm -hmm. if you have a developing economy like Nigeria, mm -hmm. where people are just trying to bring out these products that uh, ordinarily should challenge mm -hmm. those from other countries that have been at it for a long time then there's, mm -hmm. there's an un unfair balance and uh, mm. yes you want to be part of the global uh, community but um, mm -hmm. the goods from that part of the world mm -hmm. will always be 
uh, you'd always find a problem competing with those goods. You know, local products would find it extremely difficult to compete with those goods. Mm -hmm. So how do you respond to that? If you say you don't believe in shutting down and doing everything mm -hmm. here. Competition will always be a problem. It'll be a problem forever. And any, any people or any nation that cuts itself away from the rest of the world will ultimately suffer. Uh, we need to be very strategic in how we handle that. Uh, we need to understand uh, where we have been and where we're headed and then work strategically, like I say, with Nigerians and friends of Nigeria. Uh, I mean, if, if, if we're talking about being unable, which I, I don't think we can honestly say that we are at a disadvantage and we will continue to be forever. Uh, we need to understand what that competition is and if we need to work with any of these external uh, 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 groups, then we need to collaborate with them at the same time developing our own local talent and capacity. Okay, let's say for instance we take your, your world, uh, the automotive industry and say, mm -hmm. look, in X number of years, perhaps we'll say five years from now, mm -hmm. all vehicles that are not designed here, mm -hmm. um, this is just a hypothesis mm -hmm. really, uh, we close our doors to all vehicles that are not mm -hmm. designed here. Like every vehicle that gets on the road mm -hmm. must be designed here. And no matter the state, we'll keep at it until mm -hmm. we can get to that standard. You wouldn't mm -hmm. subscribe to that, would you? Because no, I, I wouldn't, no. <laughs> I wouldn't. Because we're, 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 we'll just be starting. And the Nigerian people deserve uh, uh, a competent product. And like I said, a Nigerian vehicle doesn't need to be and it can be 100% Nigerian. We'll have to source a lot of the technology from abroad. We'll need partnerships. So I'm not, I don't think we, we, we can do that. No, no country does that. Those days are over. <laughs> well, yeah, well you, you think technology has gone so far that it's a lot easier for countries that are just developing to rely, uh, well, to a large extent on these advanced technologies since mm -hmm. in any case, we're not going to reinvent the wheel, are we? So isn't it a lot easier? Doesn't it make it a lot easier to just say, well, as long as we can afford, we can just get and, and, and life goes on? Are you, are you referring to we saying if we can get a foreign made vehicle, then we shouldn't even bother yes. developing our own? Right. Some people just have that feeling that after all, you're not reinventing the wheel. So <laughs> get the companies right. that come in here and then you can just you know, go ahead, learn the skills, transfer the technology, but um, mm -hmm. starting all over from scratch, mm -hmm. how would you ever compete against those ones? That's one other side of the No, I, I'm never an advocate of starting all over from, I'm, I'm not an advocate of starting from, from scratch. Okay. If you look at Africa, um, and honestly, Africans really will not be starting from the scratch. Oh. What has happened is we as a people have forgotten where we have come from. For example, in architecture, you look at uh, in a hundred of, hundreds of years ago, people built mud houses in the north, right, with very thick walls, so the solar energy doesn't penetrate and get into the enclosure. Rooms were cool, thatch roofs that did not absorb energy. In the last couple of decades, you know, we've moved away from that, building homes out of you know, cement and you know, tin roofs. Uh, I'm not saying that's totally wrong, but these homes now, you have to have a generator to keep them warm because they get very hot, and not every Nigerian can afford a generator. So what I'm saying is, we have forgotten who we are, we have forgotten our local technology. We need to build on top of that. And, but not, I'm not just saying we bring back mud houses, but how do we, with the new uh, 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 developments around the world, how do we take that, integrate that, create synergy to produce Nigerian specific products, Nigerian specific solutions. That is the answer. Not, we shouldn't say, no, we're not going to use any of the modern technology from other parts of the world, or uh, we're not going to use any of our own technology. We need to bring the two together. That, that's the answer. It's interesting when you talk about your design, the Chevy Volt, and mm -hmm. there's, um, it could make use of uh, electric power to some extent, mm -hmm. and then uh, also make use of petrol. It brings me to the issue that Nigeria is mm -hmm. grappling with currently, the mm -hmm. dwindling price of uh, oil in the international market. And uh, seeing that Nigeria's economy mm -hmm. uh, depends to a large extent on sales from crude oil, yes. and the world is moving out gradually, uh, the demand for Nigerian oil has dropped. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and uh, there are fears about how this will affect the overall economy. Mm -hmm. Now here you have developed this vehicle mm -hmm. which of course will cut down on the use of fossil fuels mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, what we produce a lot. How can Nigeria begin to move away from this over dependence and then uh, stem whatever shocks might come as a result of the dwindling revenue mm -hmm. expected from the falling price of oil. Right. Well, this is, this is a global development. Um, no one country, no one industry uh, can really say that they're not affected by this. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, nature is now no longer seen as a force to conquer, but it's seen as a medium from which to learn and draw energy from. Uh, so really the, the, the fascinating thing here is Nigeria has so much potential in other areas and sectors that yes, it will be a challenge, but we have, we have agriculture, we have other resources, we have solar energy. There's so many other sources of energy that we could tap into. And then back to industrial design, if we begin to get our youth into industrial design and begin to get them to design products and vehicles, that use solar energy or other renewable en energy sources, we will begin to see results. So yes, it will be a challenge, and it's not just a challenge for Nigeria, it's a challenge for Earth. And it's a, it's a problem that Earth needs to find solutions to, and we happen to be living on this planet. But we have so much advantage already that probably other countries don't have access to as much sunlight or other renewable energy sources, but we have those and we can tap into those. So yes, there are challenges, but we need to continue to look at the positive outcome that can be realized. And I think it's, it's a slight hiccup, but uh, we'll come out better. Now, are, are we paying enough attention to long-term planning? I, I'm, I'm, I ask this because uh, uh, your experience working with one of the mm -hmm. largest companies in the world, how, mm -hmm. how much is given to future projections? In this country, we had a time mm -hmm. when the industries were working fine, we had mm -hmm. textile industries all over the place, mm -hmm. and uh, something went wrong, a lot went wrong, yeah. and uh, these industries shut down one after the other, and mm -hmm. people have said, we didn't think far enough about mm -hmm. uh, the future, mm -hmm. so how much of planning mm -hmm. can we bring to bear? You can use your background, for instance, mm -hmm. working with GM, for instance, you, mm -hmm. I, uh, how far are you looking into the future? Strategy is important for the success of any nation or any people. Um, it's something that is crucial and something that could really, we can use more of. Uh, but it goes back to, I keep saying, we keep forgetting who we are. We need to really go back to understanding who we are and what we could do and inculculate right from the start right from primary school that you can really achieve goals and look beyond your immediate environment, your immediate uh, uh, beyond today and tomorrow. If, if we as a people begin to do that, because I think the problem with Nigeria is not just with any one group or any one uh, uh, authority, it's a problem that each and every Nigerian is responsible for. So if we come together as a people understanding that we have this challenge and decide to work together, people from all over, South, Middle Belt, Northern Nigeria. If we decide to come together, every little village, every town, if we all come together, bring our brightest and the best together to come up with solutions, we will, we will succeed as a nation. Some say that um, transfer of technology is mm. not really so fast, that no one's going to let you know their secrets and how mm -hmm. uh, you can do it as well. <clears throat> and so people say, steal it. Um, they allege that uh, the Asians, after all, they took it, you know, copied to a large extent and uh, did a few things here and there and they came up with what today is indigenous to them. Africa can do the same, can't we? We don't have to steal anything from anybody. Right. Because, number one, we have the talent. We have an inherent talent within us that we can bring out for our own good. So we don't need to steal anything from anybody. We can develop our own so solutions. So the creativity is in us already to develop our own solutions. It is. <laughs> so yes. We're back to the same place. So yes. why aren't we doing as well as we ought to be doing? Is it? That creativity I is not being developed. 
it's there, it's, it's, it's inherent in us. So, so what's different? What's different in uh, developing that creativity? Let's look at two clans, uh, America for instance, what's different mm -hmm. there uh, that, you know, uh, gives uh, room for this creativity to flourish and mm -hmm. develop? Right. You have a Nigerian background, so what's missing? You, you now have the benefit of seeing the two worlds. What's missing here? What's missing is the collective psyche. Like I said, the, the problem really doesn't lie with any one group or any one authority. It's a collective problem. Probably you know, a lot of Nigerians think they can't do it. So we need to go back as friends, as family members, and, and, and put that new psyche or bring it back. And, and make our children, it has to start young, make our children understand that they can do it. And this is uh, a solution that has to be uh, 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 developed within the minds of each and every Nigerian. So we as a people, we as a people, if we decide that we can do it, I think that's, that's the beginning of, of coming up with the real answers. So the problem probably, the, the problem probably, with the difference between the United States and here is the, 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 the average American probably believes he can achieve his dreams. It may have or it may not have anything to do with the system, but that personal conviction that yes, you can get up and do it is what changes the landscape and enables a whole country to succeed. If Nigerians as a, a, a people have that belief and that commitment, a lot of the problems that we face will begin to fade away. Once we do that, we shall see our cities you know, develop faster. We shall see our people get enlightened. It all goes back to the individual. If we work together and believe that, yes, we can do it, we will be able to do it. Along in, in the course of this, this uh, conversation with you, there are times that I'm, I'm tempted to think, where is the designer here and where is the motivational speaker? You, you, you do get to talk to, to people a lot uh, in, in, uh, in your line of work, and um, I'm assuming Mm. that you have something to share with um, those kids out there, millions of them, who look up to uh, Jelani Ali and say, that's a Nigerian who can do it, I can do it myself. Yes, yes, yes that's, I think that's the big message that, like I said, we're all talented. And if I could do it, they can do it too, because they have it in them. All they need to do is understand what it is they're good at, and then the people around them also need to support them like I got support. So support them, encourage them, uh, help them navigate the rough waters of choosing a school, sticking to it, and then dedication, never give, giving up, no matter what anybody around you says, if you know that is what you love, you believe in, you go for it. And then we need to have really more compassion uh, all around, uh, uh, more, more, more understanding of teamwork and working together. Uh, the individual really cannot make it. We need to come together and support ourselves for success. The Chevy Volt. Mm -hmm. What next? <laughs> <laughs> many things, many things, <clears throat> many things. But uh, the big thing is Nigeria has a lot of potential uh, in the transportation sector. Um, and we have seen vehicles with four wheels. We have had them for decades. Uh, we've seen aircraft, you know, with wings that fly, but what else is there? What else is there that a village in the middle of nowhere in northern Nigeria with no access to electricity or no access to medicine, how do we connect them with, with, with medicine? What type of transportation solution can we come up with that will get there without destroying the roads, without, sorry, without destroying the natural habitat? Um, you know, a, a remote uh, a settlement uh, in, in, in Southwest, you know, cut off from any med medical equipment. How do we get to those people? Nigerians who live in Nigeria can understand these challenges and we can come up with solutions to them. Cars are great, trains are great, but there's, there's a lot of other things that are out there that we can come up with as, as progressive transportation solutions for the betterment of Nigerians and Africans. You did talk about um, one of our biggest assets being the people, the creativity, and that's the human resource of Nigerians, that's an asset. And uh, yeah. over time, uh, Nigeria suffered in the international community, the image, and the uh, uh, moment you said you were Nigerian and people tended mm -hmm. to look at you yes. uh, in a different way. Is that changing these days? I, I think it is. Uh, and I remember when, when I was in school, um, 
people ask me, where are you from? I'm in Nigeria. I've always been proud to be Ni Ni Nigerian, even when uh, we had problems. Because um, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of my background. I'm proud of all the people that, that are around me in my immediate you know, you know, town, Sokoto, you know, the north, Nigeria as, as, as a whole. I'm proud to be part of everybody. I'm, pr I'm proud to be a Nigerian from, from, like I said, you know, from Atlantic shores in the south, through the grasslands of the middle belt, all the way to the rolling hills and bright blue skies of the north. It's a magnificent people with magnificent, magnificent country with magnificent people. So I've always presented myself as a Nigerian. And uh, so even my uh, friends and uh, uh, professors, when they introduce me at uh, occasions, they mention my name from Nigeria. So everybody knew I was proud to be a Nigerian. Uh, and we need to showcase more of our, of our good. It's easy, you, you can find the negative with any place. Mm -hmm. We think we need to showcase more of the good of Nigeria so that the world would really know who we are which is great. We are, we, are, we are a great people. The world needs to, to know more and more of that. Well, as we begin to wind down on this conversation, mm -hmm. do you see the, Ni the Nigeria that you see in, 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 in the next few years? Mm -hmm. Do you see a reversal of this role of being the basic source mm -hmm. of raw materials? Mm -hmm. You see a giant growing out of this. In other words, mm -hmm people could come here mm -hmm. and take finished products mm -hmm. instead of taking the raw materials to go make the finished products and bring back to us. Yes, I, I do see that as the future of Nigeria because we have the talent, we have the youth that are now beginning to understand that potential. They see what's happening around the world and with some of the newer technologies available to them now and then if there's this initiative by the public and private sector to really empower them, we can get there, definitely. If I were to come down personally to Jelani Aliyu and say, who is Jelani Aliyu? Yes, uh, a young boy who was born in the north of Nigeria and who went to school in Nigeria and mm -hmm. ended up in the United States in one of the big companies. Beyond that, who is mm -hmm. Jelani Aliyu? <laughs> well, Jel Jelani Aliyu is, uh, is a Nigerian. I, like I mentioned, I was born in Kaduna. So I identify with, with, with that, uh, that, that part. I grew up in Sokoto, a town that I really love. I mm. really love Sokoto. Whenever I'm there, it's like it's hard to, to, go, to, to, to go away. So I am I'm Nigerian. I'm a person who, who loves to see progress brought to, to our people. So at some point in time in the future, are we likely to see some of these... Um Creativity, which um, for the time being, GM has a hold on. Now, we likely to see that in this country coming from Jelani Ali and said, this is my gift to Nigeria. When I, when I left to go to the United States, the bigger dream beyond just being a car designer was to really uh, be able to contribute to the transportation sector of Nigeria. Right. So, yes, that is, uh, I'm working towards that to be part of my future. Right. Well, to be my future. We, we, we wouldn't ask what exactly it is, but that's suffice <laughs> yes. to say you're working towards that. Yes. All right. Yes. And it is on that note to say thank you very much for uh, coming on this uh, program and sharing your thoughts with us. And I can assure you that uh, there are quite a number, many Nigerians, millions of Nigerians are very proud of you out there because I've mentioned GM, automotive design, and the first thing people say, Jelani Ali, he's Nigerian. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Right. Yes. Well, we've been talking to uh, Jelani Aliu, who's a lead designer, General Motors, and we've talked about uh, how Nigeria can move out there and tap all the creative talents and creative minds that it has in great abundance, uh, so we can produce many more uh, Jelani Aliu's out there. Thank you very much for being part of this program. We'll reach you again next week on One and One. I am Cyril Stover. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>